hey what's going on guys so today we have another very short and simple video today we are going to see how we can render a wireframe inside of maya and arnold and in the earlier video we saw how we can render an ambient occlusion pass uh, the technique is pretty much the same and let's dive into it how we can use this and a little bit extra on how we can pretty much implement the wireframe technique with other shader as well so what we are going to do here is we are going to go to the layer set menu which we have right over here click on this and you have this layer menu set up right here now consider this as this is a photoshop layer system so it will be pretty easy to understand so let's create a new layer i'm going to click on this icon to create a new layer and i'm going to call this a simple layer just so it is easier to understand now i'm going to create a new collection for this I'm going to say, let's say call this model. Now I want you to treat this as a group, although we have a create group option, which is another thing, but I want you to for now create, consider this as a simple group, just so it's easier to understand, just so you can get the concept behind this. Uh, although we do have a create group option which is another thing for another video but for today we have to create collection and we'll treat this as a simple group now as you can see we have a group but the group is completely empty and what we are going to do is we are going to go to the outliner and as you can see this is a dragon blender and i created this model entirely inside of maya so the topology is pretty you can say low poly and decent amount and i'm going to select all of these objects and i'm going to simply click here which is the add button you can also use middle mouse button to simply drag and drop whatever suits you and we have a couple of objects here on our group now let's create a material for this group now i'm going to right click on this and i'm going to say create a shader override now what this will do is it will create one shader and that will override the overall uh, group which we have right now as you can see I have a simple Lambert material on this object which is a default Lambert material and After I create a shader override it will kind of override all the materials I have in this for example if I close this for now and I'm going to create few materials. Let's create a new material I'm going to create a sand surface. Let's call this temp because it's for the temporary purpose and let's give a certain number of values to it so as you can see we have this and let's make this fairly reasonable amount of shader for this and i'm going to use a preset let's take clay and um, and let's use a gold so as you can see we have something like this imagine this this is our main scene so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to the layer setup and in the shader override i'm going to click on this checker icon to create a new shader and in the annul go to shader and we have ai wireframe click on this and we have created a wireframe now we have a couple of options which we'll get into in a while but if i render this now you'll see there is no difference and the reason is we have not activated this layer setup onto the ipr so you see this i icon over here click on this to activate this on your ipr now you have two icons over here the first one is to render this in the ipr and the second one is to do a render in the final render that means when you do a final render of your scene it will create a folder of a render setup layer and it will create another pass for the wireframe itself and then you'll have two maps the first will be diffuse the second will be wireframe now you have i think this option is pretty good because you have the option if you want to see this inside of the viewport i mean the ipr or not if you want to just see it in the ipr and not in the final render you can turn this off so i think uh, it's pretty interesting that they have given this option so i can turn this off for the final render i can turn this on for the ipr only so i'm going to keep both of this on for now and let's get into the parameters for now so the first thing we have is the edge type and I'm going to set it to polygons and the reason is because if you look at my mesh uh, it's completely um, quad not a try so I'm going to go to my wireframe and select polygon and this will just kind of fix the overall issue with my topology so let's pause this and uh, I'm going to zoom in a bit and as you can see we have exact topology we have on this IPR on this render that we have on the model so i'm going to frame this 
go back to the wireframe and then you have the fill color and the line color and then you have the line width you can change the amount of width you have if you want it to be broader or more thinner it totally depends on you i'm going to keep it to probably around 1.5 or 2 let's keep it 2 just so it's easier to see now the second thing is you can change the color if you want uh, i don't know why anybody would do that but yes it's there so you can use it so i think it looks i think it looks pretty good now yeah so you can have this uh, kind of a neon kind of thing going on uh, you can use this now let's try to implement this same wireframe technique with the other object as well i'm going to select this and i'm going to apply a default lambert material and let's turn this off as well and uh, yeah actually let's uh, delete this and i'm going to go to the hypershade let's close this as well let's go to the hypershade and i'm going to say delete unused nodes all right and that will just get rid of all the materials that we have created and that are not being used so far so i'm going to go to the arnold here and let's go to the shader and we have something called as a mix shader which is pretty interesting shader and yeah there we go let's click on this and i'm going to call this a simple mix all right so mix shader. what is a mix shader? mix shader is basically a simple shader that blends two material together and a mix material so let's keep it over here and um, i'm going to go to the shader again and select a stand surface let's delete this output since we don't need it and i'm going to out the color to the shader too all right and uh, i'm going to select a simple preset so we don't have to uh, manually keep creating a simple material for this all right so as you can see i have a copper and the copper material is not active right now and that is because we haven't actually made two materials to blend with so i'm going to take another stand surface let's delete the output and um, let me just close this down and let's choose another preset that will be chrome i guess and uh, i'm going to make the diffuse to one diffuse to one yes and um, let's choose the out color to shader one and now if i look at it uh let's choose the unreal hard hardware instead of hardware let's choose the unreal render and now as you can see we have two materials blending in now if i change it to something like a jade material now you'll see a difference so as you can see we have copper going on and a jade material and the mixed material is kind of blending them 50 50 percent so you get this green tint as well and that uh, copper look as well i'm going to keep it to chrome i think that was looking pretty good and let's um close this now i'm going to select a wireframe here and let's delete this again and drop this color to the mix now obviously we cannot attach this to the mix we need a float so i'm going to search for float in the anul and we have the color to float let's choose this this will do the job and to the mix all right so as you can see we have the wireframe going on and let's fix this first so let's choose polygon and the line width will be two so if i go to the mix over here as you can see i have this nice little wireframe going on and let's try this material on the real object so let's close this and i'm going to select my group existing material and the mix okay let's um, turn on the ipr and there we go so if i zoom in you can see the overall chrome material on the wireframe and the copper material on overall object so you get pretty nice topology as well you can demonstrate how your topology is and you can also showcase a pretty nice material on your object so you can pretty much combine this to get pretty interesting result with this and if you don't like the overall effect you can always go back and pretty much change different type of color you have maybe two-tone car paint and i'll choose something like maybe a balloon and then we'll see how this is looking so i think this is looking quite nice so there you go if you do want to render this in your final setup as a different pass what you can do is create a new layer and uh, let's create a collection for this in the collection i'm going to go to the outliner select all of this simply click one on uh, one object and shift select the last one and click on the add and then you can create a shader override in the shader override you can click on the shader AI wireframe and there you go so let's make it polygon let's keep it three just so we have 
uh, to differentiate it and also let's change the color to something like this now if I turn this on and go to the layer setup turn this on you have this so you can turn this on turn this off if you want uh, if you want a separate pass or if you just want to play around with this amazing technique you can play around with this have fun using this I think it does give pretty nice and interesting look to the overall scene so again have fun with this enjoy this if you have any question feel free to ask me and if you want to know more about wireframe you can go to the Autodesk website it, it has a doc where you can read about the wireframe itself and if you have any suggestion for the next video feel free to mention it in the comment section below again guys thank you for watching enjoy